Durham and the Soviet Union. With Iron Curtain barriers coming down, more people are taking holidays in parts of Russia that have been previously no-go areas for foreigners. But are the Soviets ready for a tourist invasion? Stuart McNeil and a Northern Life team have spent 10 days with youngsters from all over Durham in the twin town of Kostroma, also visiting Va Vladimir and Suzdal on the new tourist trail. In tonight's special report, it includes an invitation to a typical Russian wedding. Kostroma's major tourist attraction is the magnificently situated Ipatievsky Monastery. Its dominating feature is the golden-domed Trinity Cathedral, built in 1652. But like so many Russian churches, it's no longer used for worship. Our 20 Durham teenagers were even impressed with their visit here. The interior of the building is breathtaking, especially the icon stand, which in Russian Orthodox churches screens the altar from public view. It's hard to believe it's all made of wood. The frescoes are equally remarkable. There are 81 of them, and the originals were completed in just four months in 1685 by 19 painters. A wall plaque commemorates their achievement. By the way, if you're wondering how they keep those onion domes a glittering gold colour, here's how. All you need is a brush on a long pole, a pot of paint and a lot of nerve. Close by the monastery is a museum of wooden architecture, which includes some fine examples of traditional peasant houses. Even today you'll find Russians living in the country in timber dwellings similar to these. Not far from here there is a monastery, the monastery of our saviour. It's over there, across the river of... The Russians seem to be realising only belatedly the vast tourist potential of the country. Towns like Vladimir and Suzdal contain a wealth of ancient monuments and churches. The biggest problem is finding the money for restoration work. We've just about reached the end of our visit here to Vladimir. We've seen the Golden Gate, a cathedral, a couple of churches, an exhibition. We've walked nearly a mile here in searing heat to see this magnificent church here. What we're going to do now, kids? Find a bar! <laughs> You're underage. <laughs> well, we never did find that bar, but it was a surprise to find you can buy a can of Coke in the Soviet Union. Once upon a time, it might have been regarded as a symbol of Western decadence. It was during our visit to Vladimir and Suzdal that we had our first experience of the Russian black market. The Soviet authorities seemed to turn a blind eye to the activities of these black marketeers, who will offer to buy your pounds and dollars, and even the clothes you stand up in. The official exchange rate is one ruble for one pound, but on the black market you can get anything up to ten rubles for a pound. And the black marketeers are willing to swap almost anything from the West they can sell over here. This Russian doll cost me a packet of twenty duty-free cigarettes. That's about eighty pence. I reckon I got a bargain. And everybody on the party has a similar tale to tell. Well, I was walking around the streets and they've offered you money for your trainers and your jeans and your t-shirts and your sunglasses. Sunglasses are worth Three, three dolls. Russian dolls. <laughs> yeah, you can get three dolls so, for thing. And they offer you, um, they want English money or dollars. They're very fond of dollars. I've been offered uh, a sweatshirt for a shirt, just a denim shirt. And I've been offered rubles for way above the exchange rate. Like about eight to ten rubles to the pound, where it's usually about one ruble to the pound. Did you accept? No, because we'd been warned about it and it was the first day and I wasn't quite sure. So, I'd, no, I didn't. Well, we've done a lot of trekking around churches and monasteries again this morning. The weather's blistering hot, so we've decided to travel to lunch in style by horse and carriage.
register office in Kostromar, and history is about to be made. For the first time ever, TV cameras are present at a wedding ceremony. It's also the first time a local wedding has been attended by 20 teenagers from County Durham in England. The occasion is the marriage of one of our interpreters, teacher Alexei Marsov, and his beautiful bride Larissa, who is a 19-year-old student. The opening music is familiar enough to British ears. Though it's not normally played on a Yamaha organ. The registrar is a striking blonde by the name of Ala Okonskaya, who marries anything up to 30 couples a day. To the strains of the theme from Love Story, she delivers a homily about the rights and responsibilities of married couples and the virtues of tolerance and mutual respect. The advice is well intentioned as one in four marriages in Kostroma end up in the divorce court. When Larissa is asked the Russian equivalent of, do you take this man, no translation is necessary. Rings are exchanged. Note they wear the wedding ring on the right hand in Russia, and the happy couple share a kiss, or two, or three. Our invitation to the wedding had been quite spontaneous, and the Durham youngsters offered their congratulations in the traditional Russian way, with flowers. The whole ceremony was over in ten minutes, and the locals were convinced that with the presence of so many English guests, plus our cameras, Alexei must be marrying an English girl. It was a nice thought. Who knows, with a bit more glasnost, such weddings could become commonplace. With our good wishes ringing in their ears, the couple set off on a drive around the town. Good luck, thank you very much. The custom for newlyweds in Kostroma. Well, back here in the northeast, our own party of Russian holidaymakers have been visiting more of the region's famous monuments, Eldon Square and the Metro Centre. The 37 visitors from Durham's twin city of Kostroma seemed suitably impressed by commercialism. Yesterday they embarked on a choppy crossing to the Farne Islands. Today, with iron stomachs, they rode the rails of Metroland and even had a spin on the eccentric carousel. Then it was on to the shrine of the super shopkeeper. All those jeans, sweaters and plastic sandals, a symbol of the North's new resurgence. The visitors showed most interest at the electronic bits and pieces in Dixon's. At least one ghetto blaster is now on its way back to Kostroma. The price reduced dramatically because of a few scratches. This place is very convenient for the customers, you see. Mm, every, everything in the shops are for the sake of Customers. This is the 20-year-old Russian whose knowledge of English even extends to the refinements of Geordie. Today, some new examples from his phrase book. Uh, tell me the question everybody is wondering tonight. Have you learned any more Geordie expressions? <laughs> yes. Gize kupa cha mara. Okay, not bad. And ganin yem. I'll be crying it on Sunday morning. You'll be ganin yem on Sunday morning. The history-making visit to England by these ordinary Russian holidaymakers continues tomorrow with a trip to York. Then by gum, the second party from Kostroma arrives in Durham next week. Can't wait to find out what that bloke's learned tomorrow. Yes, I'm Vladimir to Govorov is a real star, isn't he? <laughs> he is. Well, that's all we've time for. I hope you'll join us. We'll be back here tomorrow night. Until then, it's good night from me. And it's good night from me.